Hey there. What do you think of new do do? Like it? It's from the wife, so you can thank her later. Have you ever bought a new house? Obviously, this is for those homeowners out there. Bought a house, put a lot of money into it, remodeling, and all of a sudden it's worth a crap load more money than you put right put into it originally. And then after a couple of years, you walk around the house and you're feeling you're just not feeling it. You're not feeling that like it's brand new anymore, and you're like, ah, I'm over it. You want to sell it. And then you walk down the couple of blocks, you're thinking, I like this house, it's not worth a lot, and I'm not gonna put any money into it, I just hope it works out on its own. It's a little bit of a stretch, but this is what the Saskatchewan Rough Riders did in 2008 when they shipped off Kerry Joseph, and hence, here's the story of Kerry Joseph. And then Joseph to the end zone, touchdown! There's the right option, and now Joseph loads it up, wide open, what a catch! To the end zone. A lot of catch. Quarterback from oh, the Kerry Joseph touchdown. Kerry Joseph in 2007 had a phenomenal season. He led the Saskatchewan Rough Riders past their prayer rivals in the 95th Great Cup, and he capped it off with the most outstanding player win. What could go wrong? You'd think you did it in Saskatchewan. You got them their third Great Cup. Rider Nation's going to build a statue right next to Ron Lancaster and George Reed? Nope. Eric Tillman had a better idea. Trade him. It was a huge gamble, and Eric Tillman was hoping to get younger, quick, and get full value for a quarterback that just went to the Grey Cup and won. Let's take a look and see what Saskatchewan got for him. Let's take a look at the trade tree. Well, this is interesting. Kerry Joseph and the... Yo. Wow, that's a huge trade tree. All right, so should we go with Toronto side or Saskatchewan side? Either side has some confusing elements to it. Now let's go with Toronto side, then, shall we? The Toronto Argonauts from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders acquire most outstanding player Kerry Joseph and a 2010 22nd overall pick. All right, let's start with Kerry Joseph. You know, he had a phenomenal career up until this point. Obviously, most of it was with uh, Ottawa and Saskatchewan once he was taken in as a dispersal draft. Winning the Grey Cup will do that for you. His time in Ottawa will be marred with the fact that nobody cared about the on field because they were too busy clamoring for what the Gleamerins were doing. Ottawa folded, and he went to Saskatchewan, where, he, like I said, he had that most outstanding play, player year. And, of course, he capped it off with the Grey Cup win. His time in Toronto, 4,000 yards passing in 2008. Great. A little bit over 2000 and 2009. You would think there was something an issue with that, i.e. Bart Andrews. Maybe there's something to explain that. Well, then you figure out that the Toronto Argonauts during those two, two years, they finished 7-29. and 29. Not exactly the greatest. And they fired first-year coach Rich Dubler halfway into the 2008 season bringing in Don Matthews, and they finished 0-8 to finish up the 8 season. What made things a little bit more sad about this is that when Adam Rita made this trade, he said, we've got the best one-two punch in the CFL for quarterbacks. That other one was Michael Bishop. Now, I know hindsight's 2020, but I question Adam Rita's mindset at this point to the point where maybe I want to go back in the time machine and want to know what drug he's on. Maybe. I don't know. So, Kerry Joseph was actually released by the, Ar by the Argonauts after the 2009 season, so that's easy. That's one and done. Let's take a look at that 22nd overall pick, shall we, in 2010? Yeah, this gets a little bit interesting. Well, the Toronto Argonauts actually ship off that 22nd overall pick to the Edmonton Eskimos. Sorry, Edmonton Football Club. I don't get some taking this to now, this is part of a condition from a previous trade from two years prior to that. So, Toronto didn't get anything back for this. It's just kind of amazing how that worked out. The Edmonton Eskimos actually packaged that with the ninth overall pick and send that to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in exchange for the sixth overall pick. And before we go to what each team has actually selected, let's follow the road of this 22nd overall pick, shall we? The Winnipeg Blue Bombers take that 22nd overall pick and they send it to the Hamilton Tiger Cats in exchange for the 28th overall pick and the rights to Alex Brink. The Hamilton Tiger Cats, they used this pick. They used it to select defensive lineman from the University of Manitoba, Eddie Steele. 
a very phenomenal player who had great numbers, great career. Unfortunately, Eddie Seal did not have any of those time, those numbers with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 31 games played, 32 tackles. It was good enough to warn him a free agent signing that would be on the Eskimos, but because of that, that branch ends there. Now that we figured out what happened with that 22nd overall pick, let's retrace our steps, shall we? Let's go to what Winnipeg did with the 28th overall pick. They selected linebacker Chris Smith. Didn't amount to much. He was actually released a couple of years after that. Alex Brink is interesting, and by interesting, it was okay. His first start would always be marred by the fact that he was terrible in his precision with passing. And it was also marred with the fact that the Bomber fans actually were booing him, chanting for Steven Childs, and we don't need to talk about that trade trade because we know what happened, do we? Yes, we do. Alex Brink actually got better until the 2013 season when he was released. Listen, I'm not going to downplay Alex Brink's success or lack thereof in Winnipeg. I just think that Alex Brink was probably an okay quarterback, but he was one okay quarterback on a long list of other okay quarterbacks when the Bombers needed a great, reliable, healthy quarterback during that tenure, and they just never got it. Alex Brink's legacy is not bad play, but rather this tweet. I never located the tweet, but here it is in written form. It says, I guess this is what happened. I guess this is not what Tim Burke had in mind when he told me that they were going in a different direction. What does he mean by that? Well, the Bombers finished 3 and 15 in that year. That was Savage. Randy Savage. All right, so now that we know that happens here, let's retrace going back. Let's see what Winnipeg selected with that ninth overall pick. They selected receiver Corey Watson. Now, this has some legs on it, so let's go with what Edmonton selected with the sixth overall pick. They selected linebacker Brian Bulky. Didn't amount to that much in that year. He was actually traded to Calgary a year after that for a conditional pick. That actually ended up being 14th overall in 2011. The Edmonton Eskimo, sorry, Edmonton Football Club selected Hugo Lopez. Neither player played it past the 2011 season. That's one and done. Let's go back to Corey Watson. Corey Watson played five years with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Really was marred by health. And only once did he play all 18 games. It was a 2011 season. He also put up over 700 yards, which is really good. That was his best of his whole career. He's never exceeded 1,000 yards in a, in a year as receiving doesn't mean that he wasn't a reliable pass catcher. It's just, like I said, he just didn't find them enough time to, to be on the field because he spent a lot of time on the IR. Well, after 2014, after his contract was finished, instead of saying, we want to resign you, the Bombers said, hey, we're going to ship you and a draft pick to Saskatchewan. That draft pick ended up being 26th overall. Winnipeg took Chris Bastian, the receiver, and a 15th overall in 2015. I'll save you the time because none of these players actually made it past the 2016 season. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers took uh, defensive back Brendan Morgan, and the Riders took defensive lineman Warry Conup. Like I said, none of them amounted to anything past 2016, so that's one and done. Chris Bastian didn't even make it past training camp. Corey Watson didn't even make it past the draft, and here's what I'm talking about. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders at draft time traded him to the Edmonton Eskimos along with the ninth overall pick in 2016. In exchange, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders got long snapper Jorgen Hoos and a 2016 third round pick. Hoos is still with the team. The third round pick was taken to select kicker Quinn Van Glissick. They had options with that. They obviously with Brett Lowther, uh, other players like Tyler Kerpigna, and of course this year, uh, John Ryan, of course, as I mentioned, Brett Lowther. Quinn Van Glissick just could not just find enough time to spend to, to hang around Saskatchewan when there is a lot better of alternatives, and right now he's a journeyman right now looking for jobs. The, Winnip the Edmonton Eskimos actually took that ninth overall pick because Corey Watson signed a free agent deal with the BC Lions in 2018. That branch ends there. That ninth overall pick was sent to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, we'll get to it eventually, with the rights to sell the capers in exchange for Chris Greaves. Chris Greaves played a couple of years with the Edmonton Eskimos, was cut after that, and didn't return to the CFL field. Selvish Capers never even made it to Winnipeg. Uh, his rights were ended there, so that ends that. The ninth overall pick was taken to select Trent Corny, defensive end. Really good player, a, spe a cool specimen of an athlete right now. Gained notoriety going into the draft with this little clip that I'm going to show you right there. Unfortunately, didn't make it out past the 2017 season where he actually quietly retired without a lot of fame and notoriety. So that's how 
that is how the Toronto side of things in this trade tree ended. Let's go with the Saskatchewan side of things because there is a huge confusion element. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, acquired Glenn January, Ronald Flemons, a 2008 first round pick and a 2010 second round pick, which ended up being eighth overall. Wait a minute. Wait a, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Eric Tillman got more for Kerry Joseph than he did for Ricky Ray? Kerry Joseph in 2008 got more in value than Ricky Ray three years after this. Are you freaking kidding me? Who, who's running that joint in Toronto? Oh yeah, the uh, guy who said that they have the best two quarterbacks in the league at the time. Oh yeah, I forgot, I, I, I forgot Adam Ray right? to the actual trade tree. Glenn January was a serviceable offensive lineman. However, he wasn't what they expected in Saskatchewan. It was one year and done. He signed a free agent deal with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So that ends that one. Ronald Flemons. Quick, hands up. Who who remember Ronald Flemons as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider? Right? If you did, you're either lying or you're a hardcore Saskatchewan Rough Riders fan because he was traded back to Toronto a couple of weeks later and he did this. Trouble. Fumble the football. And the Lions, no, they don't have it back. It's still loose. Ronald Flemons has it, and he's got a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. You better pick it up. He fumbled the ball at the goal line. Ronald Flemons had a touchdown and lost the football. Unbelievable. Un In that package, the Toronto Argonauts acquired Ronald Flemons, a 2011 30, 38th overall pick. The Toronto Argonauts selected Julian Fioli Godino at a receiver, very good special teams demon, really came to his own as a receiver with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as a free agent, so that side of thing is done. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders on that side, they acquired TJ Acre, Brian Smith, and a 2011 20th overall pick. TJ Acre played one game with the Riders, had some foot issues, got released, never came back after that. Brian Smith was a NFL journeyman. Those were his negotiating rights. Never made it north of the border. That was it. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders decided to make do with that 20th overall pick, packaged out with Adam Nicholson and sent it to the Hamilton Tiger Cats in exchange for Preche Rodriguez. Preche Rodriguez around this time was a very phenomenal talent. Maybe a second, first receiver on even the worst teams, second on even the best teams. Really underrated talent. Unfortunately, in Saskatchewan, they had a plethora of great receivers. Many of them were Canadian, hence that they had the name the Canadian Air Force. Appreciate Rodriguez didn't make it past the year. He was cut before he signed with the Montreal Alouettes. That 20th overall pick ended up being used by Hamilton for the first time, for the second time in his trade tree. Hamilton ends package deals by actually taking them. They actually selected Mark Atuan Forte, who didn't make it past the 2014 season before he retiring from football. All right, let's get to that 2008 first, uh, first, uh, first round pick, shall we? Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders took defensive lineman Keith Sholigan. I remember Keith Sholigan, obviously, as a Bomber fan. You grow to, to appreciate the things that the Riders have done. Scott Schultz, one of the, the high-priced defensive linemen, actually termed him as Keith Schultz again, saying that he reminds him so much of what Scott Schultz was in his prime. So you knew he was going to amount to great stuff, and he did. Averaging three sacks a year, only playing full season, all but two seasons, first in his 2008 season and in the Great Cup year in 2013. Keith Schultz, sorry, Keith Schuligan was on fire throughout his career, and it was good enough for him to land on the Ottawa Red Blocks through the expansion draft, so that branch ends there. All right, who wants confusing? All right. Okay. Well, now we came to the right place. Let me grab some water because you're gonna you're gonna need this. All right. So, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders acquire the 2010 second round pick, which ended up being eighth overall because the Hamilton Tiger Cats forfeited their first round pick, and we're not gonna talk about that because I forget what it was. But so this ended up being eighth overall instead of ninth overall. Well, the Toronto Argonauts got into Saskatchewan's grill two years after they made the Kerry Joseph deal. And they said, hey, we want that eighth overall pick. And Saskatchewan said, sure, we'll throw in a second, fourth, and Jamie Borum. And we'll only take the first overall pick. That doesn't seem fair. Well, 
I'm looking at it and it says Saskatchewan has that eighth overall pick. How did that happen? Well, after years and years, okay, great, hours and hours of figuring this out, the basis of the deal, what ended up being, was the Toronto Argonauts acquired the second, fourth, and eighth overall pick in exchange for the first. This Toronto Argonauts said, hey, can we get Jamie Borrow as part of the deal? And Saskatchewan said, sure, just give us our eighth back. And that's what it did. The Toronto Argonauts took the second, fourth, and Jamie Borum in exchange for the first overall and the eighth overall pick. Well, let's follow what Toronto did with that pick because, well, Joe Appel, offensive lineman, and not bad, serviceable for the Toronto Argonauts through that time until he was taken through the expansion draft by the Ottawa Red Blacks. The Toronto Argonauts also did with uh, Jamie Borum a year later, did not last that long in Toronto. They did, however, get some use out of that fourth overall pick when they packaged that with a 20th, 24th, and 25th to BC. And in exchange, Toronto got a third, 18th, 26th, and 30th overall pick in 2010. Let's take a quick look to see what um, Toronto got on that before we move forward with BC, because there is some legs out of that too. Toronto, they and third overall, they selected Corey Greenwood. This is a very good pick. and that, Yeah, I mean, I generally in past videos I have said I don't like taking, if I was a CFL GM, I would not want to take a guy who has NFL aspirations this high in the draft. Even though that really wasn't apparent at this time, it still was a risk that a lot of teams were willing to take. Corey Greenwood did mess around with the NFL here and there, and he came up north in 2014, and look out, he was phenomenal. The issue his health he was barely on the field he was off the field more often than not knee injuries concussion issues and finally Toronto decided to say we're not going to bring you back he signed as a free agent with the Edmonton Eskimos sorry Edmonton Football Club still getting used to it and that's the end of that branch the 18th overall Toronto took receiver Spencer Watt really great receiver more than your token seventh Canadian starter as a receiver had some phenomenal stats just kept just kind of like Corey Watson, uh, just a tad little better. And uh, until 2015, before he signed as a free agent with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 26th overall, Joel Reinders was serviceable, was cut a couple of times, eventually signed with the Hamilton Tiger Cats before retiring. So that ends there. And 30th overall, they took Steven Turner, never amounted to anything past the 2010 season, and he never made it back to the CFL. On the BC side of things, the BC Lions took fourth overall Danny Watkins. Never made it north of the border, never, and again, this stems from uh, the Corey Greenwood issue. It is very a big risk to take a guy who is phenomenal athlete as he is, but for someone that has NFL aspirations, it is a huge gamble. Right now, he retired in 2014 and is now a firefighter in California. You get my full respect. The 20th overall, the BC Lions take Hami Mahmoudi. Guaranteed I butchered that name, so I apologize. At 24th, they also took Nate Binder. Both, both players didn't make it past the 2011 season before signing and being cut by the Edmonton Eskimos. Again, Edmonton Football Club. Eventually, I will get this straighted. I apologize. Special teams is praised a lot by a lot of CFL fans. Didn't really make that much of an impact, but you still have to praise them because they both got great cup rings. The 25th overall, the BC Lions took Akeem Foster, phenomenal player in his own right with the BC Lions, was really integral in that great cup win, although he wasn't a pre predominant player in that. He still played an integral role. In 2013, the BC Lions traded Akeem Foster to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in exchange for Buck Pierce. Foster made it past the 2013 season before signing with the Edmonton SB Football Club. I told you, it was, yeah, almost caught it. Buck Pierce retired after 2013 uh, before returning to Winnipeg as a member of the coaching staff under Mike O'Shea. That ends there. Let's, let's go to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, shall we? That first overall pick that they selected was Shamari Williams. Now, hindsight's 2020. We all kind of like to say that, hey, this didn't work out. In the previous videos, we're talking about Faith Akakity and Josiah St. John. Both those players were coveted as top players ready at that time. And Shamari Williams was a first-round pick projected by a lot of people to be first-round. I don't think anybody had him to be first overall. 
Brendan Tubb, in my opinion, to make all those moves to get rid of all those assets just for a pick that never panned out really doesn't make good and doesn't make him look good and kind of gives him that reputation that has been garnered and tried and true that he's really not the draft genius that a lot of people said he wasn't. So, he didn't cut, make it out of Saskatchewan. He signed with Hamilton, so that branch is done. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders 8th overall took Jeremy Sisko, receiver out of Saskatchewan, expected to be to be to be to do great things in Saskatchewan. And as I mentioned with the Preche Rodriguez statement, they had a plethora of receivers. There wasn't a lot of opportunity. He hung around on the practice roster before being released soon thereafter. Uh, that'll do it. That'll do it. What do you what do you what do you think? Did Saskatchewan do good in this trade? They won the Grey Cup in 2013. Toronto won the Grey Cup in 2012, so you know that they didn't really matter. And that's the problem with the CFL trade trees, is that our goal is to win the Grey Cup to make these moves, and somehow with you when you're not a participant or major participant, you end up winning the Grey Cup because you participated somewhere within that trade tree and because of contracts being short. It kind of makes a lot of these irrelevant, but it's still cool to actually do the blueprints and the footprints of these trades. Saskatchewan won the Great Cup. They got a lot of value for Keith Scholigan. And Jorgen Hoos is still with the team, right? So they still got value. They got a Great Cup out of this. And they're home turf in Regina in 2013. On Toronto side, yeah, during this time they got two Great Cups. Corey Greenwood made it past one. Ronald Flemings got one. They probably weren't integral parts of that team and that great cup winning team. And for that, you kind of have to give them a passing grade because of that. However, still takes does not take away from the fact that Toronto really got fleeced out of the original deal. How the heck do you get more for Kerry Joseph than Ricky Ray? Well, that'll do it for this week's video. If you like what you saw, comment below. If you don't, well... You can also tweet with us at Rouge Radio, and of course you can comment with me at Rouge Daltz. You can also send an email with suggestions and leave a comment below with your suggestion for future trade trees. Next week, we will discuss how the Ottawa Red Blacks became Great Cup champions. And of course, this video is powered by the Canadian Football Podcast Network. You can follow them at CF Pod Network on Twitter. I wonder what I could get in value if Eric Tillman traded for me.